One of the most critical areas of any successful data protection strategy is the ability to recover what you need when you need it quickly to maintain continuity of the business. Instant VM recovery is a functionality within Veeam that enables the user to run a failed workload directly from the backup file within minutes. Not only is this easy to perform, but this can be leveraged from any backup that you have. Let's take a look in the software how you initiate this restore type, as well as what options you have along the way. Now that we're in the software, let's explore how an instant VM recovery works. The first step is to launch the wizard. You can do this from one of two places. One place would be the ribbon menu under restore, and probably the shorter method is to simply browse the backups that you have on disk, right click the failed VM that you need to recover, and choose your very first option, which is instant VM recovery. This is going to launch the wizard. Now at this point, just like most of our recoveries that you can perform, the very first step in the wizard is choosing which version you want to bring online. By default, it's automatically gonna grab the latest available restore point when you hit next. Now, you have the ability to go back to the original location with all the same settings, or you can perform a restore to a new location or perhaps with different settings. Notice you do have the ability here at the bottom to choose whether or not you want tags to also be recovered along with the VM. So we'll leave that enabled and we'll go to a new location. Now from here, I can modify and redirect this instant VM recovery to another host, another folder, modify the name if I want, and I could also change the resource pool allocation if need be. Now in this case, the only thing I'm going to change is we're gonna add a suffix to the name just so we know that this is the restored version, okay? Now when we hit next, we do have the ability to redirect the write cache. Now what the write cache is used for is when you launch an instant VM recovery, we'll create what's called a redo log. The redo log is simply there to track the writes or the changes that are occurring while the instant VM recovery is running. Now, generally speaking, this write cache location does not exist on production storage, but rather it will exist as a volume and folder on whatever mount server that you're using within your repository configuration. More on that within the user guide. If you want the best possible performance while you're using instant VM recovery, good example would be a highly transactional database workload. You may choose to redirect this write cache over to a production data store to pick up additional IO performance capability that your production array offers over that of a general spinning disk on say a mount server. Now, the next option is secure restore. If you wanna do a malware check before you launch the instant VM recovery in production, you have that optional feature available here. You can proceed if malware is detected but disable the NICs, or you can abort the recovery altogether. All right, lastly, you can give it a reason. We'll just say testing. And then finally, one other very important step at the bottom you do have the ability to choose whether or not you wanna turn this VM on as well as connect it back to the network. Now, here's a great example of why this is important. We didn't have a failure for this quick demo, so we are gonna power it on automatically, but for this case, we're not gonna reconnect it to our production network since the original version is still running. Now, had this been a real failure, chances are you would want both of these checkboxes turned on so that when it is powered on automatically, it will automatically be accessible on your network. Finally, you hit restore and it starts the process. Now, while this process is beginning, what we're actually going to do is a couple things. Number one, we're going to lock the backup file. So that's a very important distinction. When you do an instant VM recovery, the backup file is always in a read-only state, meaning you can't potentially compromise the integrity of your backup data that lives on your repository by launching this instant VM recovery. All the reads will be coming from the original backup source, but all the writes will be captured in the redo log that we touched on a moment ago. Now you see that it actually locks the backup file. Just like I said a minute ago, you're gonna have a read-only version and it's gonna publish that VM into the virtual infrastructure. 
Now, when this process finishes, it's important to note that this is not a finalized restore at this point. Instant VM recovery is essentially done with two steps. The first step is what we're doing right now, which is getting that workload running, getting it available, and allowing the users to consume the resources again. Prime example is if this were to be an exchange server, once we get it running, emails will begin flowing, Outlook clients will reconnect, etc. But notice here at the bottom, it says waiting for the user to start the migration. Now, the reason this is notating this at the bottom is you'll see instant recovery is bold here in the UI and you see the VM that we have in a mounted state. Now, like I said, there's a second step to this. And once you get the instant VM recovery running, the workload is back online, your users are able to consume that application again, then you need to finalize it. And there's two options. You can either migrate this to production or you can stop publishing. Now, if this were to be a real failure, migrate to production would be the logical choice. Now, this is something that you could wait until a maintenance period or a low peak hour time of day, such as the evening, before you actually kick off this migration. Or if this were another use case where you quickly wanted to bring online a workload and do a compare and contrast, perhaps of a setting or a database from the current live production state versus the way it was a week ago, maybe you never had any intentions on migrating it, you just wanted to turn it on briefly, do your comparison, and that in that example, you would simply want to stop publishing once you're done, okay? Or you could open the console and log in directly from here without even needing to open up your vSphere client in this case. So in this example, we're gonna stop publishing because we didn't have any intention on doing the full restore. But if you did choose migrate to production and you do have a license for storage vMotion, that's exactly what we're going to leverage. If you don't have the storage vMotion license, we'll try to use our quick migration functionality, which will create the new VM. And once it's ready, we'll do a smart switch where we'll pause the memory state from the instant VM recovery version and resume it on the new version. So there will be a very, very brief period of service interruption when you do the migration if you don't have that storage vMotion license. So just plan for that before you kick off that migrate command. And that's how you perform the instant VM recovery. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.